What's going on, everyone? This is your astrology horoscope for Wednesday, August 16th, 2023. I'm astrologer Alex Skiles, and welcome to the Moonbase. Thank you all so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Hope you all are doing amazing. It's the Leo new moon. We got Uranus squaring the sun and the moon as the moon and the sun are together exactly. So I'm doing this horoscope as the new moon is happening. Exactly. So the new moon is going to be exact at 2.39 a.m. It's 11.47 here. So, yeah, so this Uranus squaring this new moon here is really forcing some massive revolutionary change within us. This is a new path opening up. This is a new cycle, a new creative rebirthing. You know, we just had this Venus Kazemi with the sun and... I think with this new moon right after it, it's just really, a, it, we know where we're headed. We know what relationship situations we don't want to go back on. We don't want to get caught up in. And we know the relationships that are valuable to our lives that do respect and support who we truly are and admire our raw, authentic selves, even if it's not for everybody. You know, and that's very Leo. It's like Leo's not for everybody. You know, some people have a hard time with Leo. Some people can't handle how much a person could just be themselves for who they are and be that unapologetically all the time, 24-7. And this is definitely giving us the, the kick in the ass to really just say, you know what? I really having given myself the opportunity to just be who I truly am because I get so caught up in my insecurities and I can't just get over that hump to express myself fully. And that's what people really need, truly, is is they, they need people to inspire other people. And that's what Leo does. Leo truly inspires other people. Leo is the light that comes down and illuminates our consciousness, humanity, and everything in front of us to show us like, hey, like we are here to create. Leo is all about creating, whether the fifth house and Leo rule children. You know, cr creativity is not just I'm an artist or I'm a performer. It's creation itself, the creation of the universe, the creation of another human being, another soul coming into a body. That's what this Leo new moon is all about with this Venus retrograde and Uranus squaring over. It's just forcing us to get over these humps and get over our insecurities and where we've been stuck. Uranus has a hard time being in Taurus because it can really get stuck whenever it really just wants to constantly move, shift, and change. And change the course to just really discover and find out for itself. That's what Uranus and Aquarius want to do. It really wants to do the science. It wants to find new things. It wants to take new pathways to uncover new information. And I definitely think with this square over to the new moon, it's helping us uncover new information about where we don't want to be stuck anymore and giving us that confidence. And Mars is also making this trine over to Uranus, which will happen later through the day here after the new moon. And it's really giving us the insight to really, you know, because this Uranus squaring the sun and the moon, I, as much of a kick in the ass towards a new direction as it can be, like it can bring up some chaotic stuff. It can bring up some tumultuous stuff, but all these things are necessary to force us to the next stage, right? And with this Mars trining Uranus, I think it's allowing us to take these opportunities or take whatever it could look like a crisis or chaos that Uranus can really stir up. And it's allowing us to take action on deciding whether, okay, is this crisis going to be the downfall of a situation or who I am? Or is this an opportunity to really innovate the next phase and the next step and Uranus is uh, trining Mars has really given us that boost to really just 
take whatever can be what can seem absolutely insane and turn it into real tangible physical earthly opportunities and yeah mars is really uncovering the details it's been uncovering the details and so is mercury i mean mercury is getting closer to mars but it's not going to meet with mars so mercury is going to retrograde at 21 degrees mars is at 22 so it's like we're getting some information, but there's things as Mercury gets ready to go retrograde that we've forgotten about that we're going to have to go back and really revisit and revise and mentally kind of take our time to hash out all the details. But yeah, this Mars trine Uranus is allowing us to have the opportunity and it's giving us a lot of clarity and insight and mental presence to really take some of these some of this madness some of this uranian you know uranus is like a mad scientist so it's like it needs to be grounded you know mars and virgo is giving us an opportunity to kind of ground some of this madness and i think it's interesting too because you know from our hermetic perspective it's like what is going on outside of us beyond the atmosphere around the world is also happening within us that is the as above so below right so i really would like to take a look at some situations that are happening you know we can we can look at this sun moon in Leo, squaring Uranus and Taurus, right? So this new moon in Leo here, this is fire. This is passion. This is intuition burning at its hottest, brightest form. And this Uranus and Taurus is this earthly kinds of shifts. I mean, Uranus and Taurus, I mean, this is earth. I mean, this is massive shifts to the earth, to the physical plane. And that's what Uranus is doing. It's shaking these very physical, material things up. So when Uranus in Taurus as an Earth sign is squaring the sun in Leo with the moon, a new moon in Leo, which is fire. I mean, we have this fire and Earth element really in conflict to one another. And we can see what's happening outside of ourselves right now, right? We're seeing... There's fires happening all across the world. So this is where earth and fire really collide. And this fire is also burning within us, right? And what this fire and this passion is really calling for is for us to really stand up and be who the hell we are. But at the same time, when it comes to Leo energy, it could be too much for people. It could be too much for somebody to just be who they truly are because it's in the way the matrix system is programmed us these days is really telling us not to be ourselves and to be a part of the group and not go along with you know or to only go along with what everybody else is doing and not to think for yourself and not think critically and uranus is a critical thinker uranus, uranus does think outside the box uranus doesn't think like other people but Definitely when it's in conflict with the sun and its dignity and the moon right with the sun. I mean, it's giving this very emotional, charged, electric impulse to really shock us to really get over these humps and ignite that fire and keep that fire lit, but also do it in a very grounded way. And Black Moon Lilith is also playing a massive part in this new moon here it's a degree off the moon and the sun but still i mean there is this sense of darkness underneath it all and this darkness and passion have a relationship you know passion can exist in a dark place and i don't mean dark as an evil i mean just a much more undercurrent a darker undercurrent of things that aren't necessarily on the surface and that's what black moon lilith can really bring up is the things that aren't on the surface that are taboo you know, I mean, I, yeah, like I mean, like I said, it's like it's not about darkness and evil. It's more about darkness and the taboo and what is abnormal, you know, especially on a sexual level, you know. So 
it's these very unconventional taboo things that are coming up. Definitely with this Uranus square. I mean, Uranus is also not normal. <laughs> you know, it definitely is more along the lines of what is taboo and outside of our comfort zones. So with this Lilith and this Uranus energy, it's like it's igniting this passion that is totally unconventional and being willing to accept to express it outwardly and freely and not be afraid to be judged and do that unapologetically because there's a lot that it can teach other people. You know, Leo wants to shine the way for other people. And there's, I feel like all of us have some weird, dark, taboo things going on inside of us that we may not feel comfortable with. And we need this Leo energy to say, Hey, we can all not we we can all actually express these things and not be judged. You know, because there's a lot of judgment going around. I mean, this South Node in Libra gets very judgmental and you know, but that's not what's gonna win right now. What's gonna what, what is winning right now is the sun in Leo and the North Node in Aries just totally aligning our identity and our true creative selves. You know, and here in a day or two, the sun's going to try in the North Node in Aries. And this is going to be a big deal, too. In about, yeah, two or three days. So this is going to be a big deal, too. And this is really, over the next couple of days, I mean, we're really going to be feeling supercharged and not being afraid to just stand up and be ourselves and express our passions. And even if they're taboo and weird, it's okay. Like, if if people are going to judge, people are going to take it the wrong way. But that's the thing, especially with Uranus making this square here and Jupiter and Taurus as well. It's like, even if people are getting fixated on only the negative things about how you express yourself or how others express themselves, Taurus is the long game. So it will be, you know next year or years down the road where they'll be like you know what like that that was really unnecessary to be stuck in that judgment you know they were right you know or maybe i should have not been so stuck and judgmental and expressed myself freely you know and that's really what this new moon is all about is really calling us to just ignite that passion that black moon low with passion and even if they're weird, we can't be afraid. We can't be afraid to just say it outright. Speak it outright. Put it into words. Put it into a song. Put it into a poem. Put it into, you know, any form of some creative outlet that is going to inspire other people. And that's what Leo is all about. And that's what this new moon is really clearing the way here, you know. So, I mean, Venus is retrograde. But the sun is now moving on. Venus will get back to this spot here in another month or so. And then we're really going to be understanding what we've been going through this past almost a month here. And, you know, we're, we're starting to get that confidence back. Definitely with this new moon. It's like we're feeling emotionally recharged, you know, but not without its conflict and, you know, discomfort. As well, and Uranus is very uncomfortable, but I think we all need that right now. <laughs> the whole world needs that, you know. And yeah, this is where fire and earth collide, and that is what is happening in the world as well, as we can see. And it's all for evolutionary necessity. You know, whatever is happening is always meant to be, and it's always to take us to the right place at the right time. And, you know, sometimes in the moment, it's hard to understand that and hard to accept that. But it is in due time where we always realize that no matter what, every single time we always realize like, ah, oh, it was meant to be that way. Even when shit got crazy or it took way too much time or it just was not in our favor at that moment, it always plays out in the way that it's supposed to be. And it's the divine plan, God's plan, whatever you want to call it. Like, we are all a part of this. 
and we are all a part of this creation. And this new moon in Leo is reminding us of that, that we are a part of this creation. And we are here to create. We are creative beings. And that creativity can get suppressed when we get stuck in these matrix scenarios. You know, and that's going to be coming up a lot too over this next 20 years with Pluto and Aquarius is breaking out of these matrix programmings and scenarios that really are just hindering our raw, authentic selves. So, yeah, this is super intense. This is very intense. I mean, this is another 28 days of this cycle here unfolding, you know, as we move into Virgo season. I mean, we're only if we're only four or five days away from Virgo season. Mars and Mercury's in Virgo. Mercury's going to go retrograde pretty soon. So we're already feeling it. There is a certain feeling every time planets come into Virgo. It's like I can almost like feel the vibration or the smell and the taste of fall. There's something about it, you know. It, in L.A., we don't really feel the seasons changing, but I grew up in the Midwest, so we had the seasons on time every year at the same time, and there is a certain sensation. And the older I get, and even being not in a place where seasons happen, as the planets move into these parts of the celestial equator i mean we feel that vibration and that's what tropical astrology is all about you know has nothing to do with just these archetypes and these personality types and the types of the signs of the zodiac it's all about the seasons and the cycle of the seasons and the ecliptic so yeah we're starting to feel the the evolution of that and we are gathering the details. So, I mean, we got the five of wands here. And this is, I don't know if you could see it, but this is, this is my favorite tarot deck. So we can see the Leo. So we can see Leo right here. And this is Saturn, right? So the five of wands, I mean, this can bring up, you know, some very, you know, some intense situations where, you know, we get, into situations where we're quarreling and a lot of different things coming at us all at once. And this is very Uranus squaring the sun and the moon in Leo. So it's like there's so much happening all at once. So many people coming at us, conversations, opinions, judgments all at once. And this is a test. This is a massive test. I love this deck because it always it brings in the astrology to the tarot. And with Saturn here, we see Saturn. We see the Saturn of, and Leo. I pulled this card right before we, this, I didn't just select this card. I pulled this r randomly and this is what came out. So, you know, the, there, there can be some discord. There can be some chaos. There can be too many things going on at once. And Uranus is really wreaking havoc and can bring in some chaos. But with this Mars trining Uranus, there is opportunities to turn these chaotic situations or these tumultuous events into real opportunities for a revolution within us, a revolution outside of us in the world. And we have to pass the test. And with this new moon, it's really putting us to the test. And this test is really, you know, it wants to test us on, are you willing to stand up and be your raw, authentic self? Or are you going to fall into the matrix and just be like everybody else, you know? And the only way to really get to that place where you are expressing your raw, authentic self is to not be afraid to go into those places that are unconventional or, or, or taboo, you know? We got Uranus and Lilith playing a massive part in this new moon. So we have to tap into those unconventional places. We have to tap into those darker, taboo places. And we have to not be afraid to stir shit up for the next best thing to happen. And sometimes we have to say things whether it's accepted or not. So Uranus is about freedom. Leo is also about freedom. And 
freedom, creativity really depends on freedom. So we can't have creativity, creativity if we do not have freedom. And this conversation is going to be coming up a lot over the next 20 years. You know, it's already coming up. We're having it in many facets of our lives about where we are free and where we are not. You know, can we express ourselves freely? Are we even thinking for ourselves? You know, there's so much programming going on through our phones and everything else. It's like this is a time to just unplug from that and go into some very uncomfortable situations. Because when you step into uncomfortable situations, that's when you really make massive changes whenever you're willing to just break out of that Taurus. I'm just going to sit here because I'm comfortable here. And, you know, when you're willing to break out of that, that's when you really make changes within yourself. And when you make those changes within yourself, your physical reality starts to manifest and change along with that. So this new moon is a real test to your creative self. So hope you all have a lovely new moon. It's going to be intense. That fire is lit. Fire and earth are really challenging each other and causing a lot of friction to get us to the next phase. So we got another 28 days of this. And then by the time we get to the next phase here, Venus is going to be well on its way to coming into Virgo. So... Once we get out of this Venus retrograde, things are going to really start shaping up. Even though we got a bunch of planets retrograde, and there'll be six planets retrograde in here soon, it doesn't really matter. I mean, we're really starting a new phase because um, we've been going through a lot. We've been This summer has not been your average summer, to say the least. So, hope you all have a lovely Wednesday. Happy new moon, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Peace.